Alex Rosen from the Yapo team. I'm sure you're chuckling right now as I'm calling you out, Alex. I can picture it. Good to see you here as well. Alrighty. Well, it's two after. I think that's good timing to kick things off. So really happy to welcome everybody to today's event. Um, we're This is uh, the gorgeous Tech Partner Series, um, now rebranded as the D2CX, which is a community um, built on a platform called Bevy that we're now using. Um, Bevy is a, a webinar hosting platform used by the likes of Google and Facebook and Slack. And it's a great platform that you as a company can use to host events, but you can also allow your value partners to host events under your on your behalf under that same umbrella. And so the DDCX direct to consumer um, experience is this new chapter that we've launched here at Gorgeous, um, all centered around the theme of you know bringing together experts in the space, brands, agencies, technology partners um, who know exactly what it takes to deliver an exceptional customer experience to consumers. And so this is just one of many webinars and events that you can expect in the future that's centered around this theme. Today's event, as you can see, is all about prep, uh, preparing for the future of fashion, apparel, and e-commerce. Obviously, e-commerce has changed uh, so much over the last few years, and fashion and apparel being such a dominant vertical within the e-commerce ecosystem. And so there's you know, amazing tools out there, many of which are you're going to see today, centered around making it easier than ever before for fashion and apparel brands to really level up um, in terms of delivering a, you know exceptional experience for their customers. And that's that's all. So I'm just going to kick things off by telling you a little bit about um, today's event, some some basic some basic rules, what you can expect. We'll talk about some prize giveaways, and then we'll just jump right into it. So as I said, today is all about prepping for the future of fashion apparel. BFCM is obviously just around the corner. Same with the holiday season, and so this is a great time to start looking back at what you did last year. You know what worked, what didn't work, what could you improve on, and really start getting your ducks in a row so you can have an even better BFCM this coming season. And so with that, we've, we've invited a number of our highly valued partners to the stage. So we have Yapo, Gatsby, Sezzle, and Tapcart. I'll let them do the talking for themselves today. I think everybody's going to be really excited to hear what these different companies and their products uh, have to offer for merchants. And if you're not checking or you haven't checked out these platforms yet or you're maybe considering them, this is an, honestly a great opportunity um, to see these in action. This is not a sales pitch uh, presentation. This is really these partners coming together to showcase real stories of how their products are transforming businesses, which is obviously the main focus of e-commerce. In terms of the logistics for today, really all we're asking for you is to ask questions. This is designed for the brands and businesses out there. So it's, it's, it's in your best interest to ask as much questions, give us feedback, and then in the chat, definitely engage with speakers and ask questions. And I encourage brands with us today to exchange experiences uh, that they've had on the given topics that we'll be speaking about today. Obviously, you're coming away with a lot more than just uh, great knowledge uh, and experience from the speakers today, but they've also uh, graciously put up a lot of great prizes up for grabs. And so you can see the different prizes that you're eligible to win simply by tuning in today. And so the way that this will work is that um, we have five speakers that each get a 15 minute designated slot, including their question and answer period. And then at the end of their presentation, I'm gonna very scientifically scroll through the list of attendees and just pick one lucky winner. We'll take note of your contact information, and then we'll get in touch with you in the next few days to get your shipping address, and we'll send those out. So the only caveat is that you need to be tuned in with us um, at the time that we're announcing these winners to be eligible. And so this is just a small token of our appreciation for you taking time out of your busy schedules. It's hot as blazes out there, uh, basically all across uh, the continent. Um, you know, July 4th is just around the corner, so we do very much appreciate everybody taking time to join us today. All right. Um, enough of me, you'll hear from me later on, but for now, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to introduce our friend, Emma, who is with our partners at Yapo, which is one of Gorgeous's top partners. Welcome to the stage, Emma. Thank you, Chris, for the intro. And guys, I will just start off by saying that the espresso machine that we're giving away, I actually have one and it's amazing. So I encourage you all to participate. Um, sure. but quick, <laughs> uh, so, sorry, Emma, real quick. I'm just going to just going to tee up with a quick introduction. So. I introduce all speakers and I always uh, drop a fun fact as well. So yeah, really excited to welcome Emma, who is an enterprise customer success manager, meaning she works with Yapo's biggest and most uh, trusted uh, clients. Uh, her fun fact is that she lived abroad in Israel for three years, which I think is awesome. Uh, yeah. And with that, Emma, the floor is all yours. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, 
So, hey guys, hope you can all see my screen. Um, just everything look good before I dive in. Taking silence as a yes. So um, <laughs> this deck I'm gonna walk you through today are strategies for fashion brands to engage, retain, and delight customers um, in the e-commerce space. So um, I'll skip over the introduction. I think uh, Chris did a pretty solid job of introducing me, but I'm from the Yako team. In terms of what we will cover today, so first I wanna take you guys through Yotfo for those of you who aren't familiar with our brand and our platform and what we offer from a product perspective. Next, I wanna walk you guys through the state of the fashion and apparel industry, particularly in the post pandemic era that we are hopefully approaching. Most importantly, I wanna walk you through some strategies that we uh, suggest you look at in order to engage, retain, and delight your customers. And then like Chris said, I'll save some time for question and answers. So first, Yotpo is an all-encompassing e-commerce marketing platform. At present, we have five different products. So we have reviews, visual UGC, loyalty, referrals, and SMS marketing, and we serve over 30,000 clients. So it's no secret that the e-commerce industry is booming. Um, in addition to that, the fashion and accessories sector of the e-commerce industry is actually the second biggest sector trailing only behind food and beverage. Um, what this means for you, though, assuming those of you are in the fashion and accessories or e-commerce space, um, online retail sales will reach 6.39 trillion by the end of 2021. So needless to say, there's a lot of potential. So in May 2021, Yotpo ran a survey that they sent out. We sent out to about 1,000 um, consumers. And what we've noticed is that as the pandemic begins to wane, consumer behavior is changing. So three main trends that we identified in this survey. So first, um, there is currently a shopping overdrive. And I know that I, that's something I experience myself, but shoppers are making up for lost time. Um, in fact, 79% of Americans are saying that they're now planning to shop more in the coming months than they did in the past year. Next, how are consumers shopping? So not everyone is ready to shop in person yet, and that was what we found from our survey. More specifically, we found that 37% of customers said they're going to stick to shopping mostly online, whereas 53% plan to do a little mix of in-store and online. Most importantly, what our takeaway from this survey was is a trend in the rise of the VIP shopper. So we found that 83% of shoppers say that if their favorite brand had a VIP program that they would join it, but also that 64% of shoppers said that they would actually be willing to pay um, to be considered a VIP customer with one of their favorite brands in exchange for things like free product, early access to sales, concierge service, um, exclusive customer support, live chat, all of that. Um, so needless to say, coming, coming from the takeaways of our survey, I wanna prepare you all with four strategies that we recommend in order to see success in this new era of e-commerce. So strategy one is engaging customers with a loyalty program. So um, I'm sure those of you who kind of work um, on paid advertising are aware, acquisition costs are on the rise and they're showing no sign of stopping. In the past 60, six years, 60 years, um, acquisition costs have risen about 60%. So what this means for your brand is that in order to be successful, retention is going to be critical for survival. So different ways that you can see success with a loyalty program. So first and foremost, what we've seen across the board is that loyalty programs will help you lift key metrics, such as average order value, repeat purchase rate, and as a result, the average revenue that you're bringing in per customer. In fact, according to a study by Forrester, across traditional uh, fashion and accessory retailers in the US and Canada, Customers who we consider as redeemers, so customers who engage with loyalty, will spend about $99 more on average than a customer who we consider a non-redeemer or a customer who does not engage with loyalty. Next, you can leverage loyalty to collect meaningful customer data. So uh, with the decline in cookies and um, 
data, it's more important now than ever for brands to find new new ways and new strategies to actually get meaningful insights from their customers. So with loyalty, you can learn about your customer's product interest, engagement history, purchase behavior, so on and so forth. Next, with loyalty, you're able to actually leverage that data by creating different customer silos. So one, will kind of house all the relevant information that you need about each customer. But not only that, you can actually segment your customers into nuanced groups based on the data that you've collected and actually target them in a more personalized way. Lastly, one of the benefits with loyalty is that it can help you drive new channel adoption. So for example, SMS marketing is one of our, is our newest Yotpo product. And by encouraging it, by offering customers rewards for signing up for SMS, we've seen in fact that 76% of loyalty customers are actually inclined to subscribe to a brand's SMS program. So a brand that we at Yotpo think does a phenomenal job with their loyalty program is Princess Polly. So their loyalty program is very VIP tier centric. Um, and some, some metrics and some benchmarks that they've seen with their program. So they've seen an 191% higher review conversion rate from customers who are deemed as loyalty customers as opposed to non-loyalty customers, a 66% repeat purchase rate, and a 74% VIP participation rate uh, from their customers who have actually reached their VIP tier. So strategy two is not only to invest just in a loyalty program, but to make sure that you are investing in an omni-channel loyalty program. So 25% of shoppers have said that their biggest frustration with brands is when a shopper is participating in the brand's loyalty program. They love the brand. They're maybe like a top VIP customer. They go in store and suddenly they lose their status. It doesn't mean anything because the brand doesn't have an in-store loyalty experience. So a huge initiative that our product team was working on this past year was making sure that there was a seamless experience for the brands that offered in-store loyalty. Um, and personally with the brands that I work with, um, as the pandemic is slowly starting to settle down and stores are opening up and shoppers are coming back, we are setting up omni-channel loyalty programs from uh, almost all of my fashion and accessories brands that I work with in order to streamline the customer experience. And this right here is a screenshot from Volcom. Um, kind of you go in store, you can send their, their QR code and this is what you'll see and it allows the customer to engage with the program directly in store. So strategy three is personalization and you can do that with SMS marketing. So it's no secret, customers are shown ads all the time. I know I'm sure you experience it yourself every day. So SMS marketing provides brands with the opportunity to cut through the noise and actually reach their customers where they are, which let's face it, is on their phones. Um, so according to a study by Shopify, um, on average, customers spend about, or people in general, spend about five hours a day looking at their phone. In addition to that, about 70% of millennials have said that they prefer SMS marketing as their primary channel of communication with their favorite brands over email marketing. So some stats that I found really impactful, over 50% of shoppers are interested in being able to text with their favorite brand in order to build a personal relationship. Over 54% of shoppers are interested in sharing more information with their favorite brands in order to receive a more personalized experience. So the last strategy that I wanna walk you guys through today is leveraging, leveraging social proof to help combat returns. So it's no secret that returns are a really large pain point for e-commerce brands, particularly in the fashion and accessory space. So this example that I have here is one of our partners, Draper James, and something really interesting that they said when they came to us was that dresses in particular have a really high return rate because maybe a shopper isn't sure of their size, so they'll order two, or it'll be a dress for an occasion, so they'll order multiple styles, whatever it is but leveraging customer and user-generated content, you can actually help combat returns. So 
So in order to do so effectively, it's important to have a uh, content collection strategy that allows you to not only generate a large quantity of user generated content, but also quality user generated content, something that's actually going to be useful for your shoppers. So four ways that you can do this. So one is collecting reviews with SMS. So like I said, SMS is one of our newer product offerings. That being said, what we found is that customers who are sent review requests via SMS over email have a 66% higher conversion rate at actually leaving a review. Next, answer your customers' questions. So we always encourage our partners to leverage this functionality of our reviews platform, which basically allows a prospective shopper to post a question. Hey, what's the material like? How does this product fit? What occasion did you wear this to? And the brands can choose if they want to have their customer service team answer these questions directly, or if they'd like to crowdsource the answers to these questions to actual customers in order to allow for a more community kind of feel. Next, it's going to be important to guide shoppers to the right reviews. And to do this, we leverage our, we call it our AI reviews widget. Um, so for example, in the fashion and accessories space, fit is kind of the primary reason that customers typically make returns. And so with our AI widget, a customer can navigate to customers who have previously left reviews with the same maybe height, maybe same um, body type or whatever metrics you're able to filter by in order to narrow down, find the reviews that are right for them, and then the, to determine maybe if they want to size up or down or if the product is true to size. Lastly, you can leverage user-generated content um, by engaging with on-site galleries. So this will help combat the returns that say, hey, the product didn't look uh, like I thought it would on-site, and not to mention, it's a great source of inspiration for prospective customers to see how other users have worn the product. So to wrap it all up, I wanna walk you guys through what the ideal user journey would look like for someone who's kind of engaged with each of these strategies. So let's take this customer here and we'll, we'll call her Jane. So let's start with Jane at the acquisition phase. So maybe Jane came in through a referral or maybe she came into your website simply because she stumbled on it. Next, Jane's engaging with your brand. Uh, perhaps she sees a reviews widget and begins to filter in order to narrow down um, her options and learn more about the product. Next, she's converted. So she's made a purchase. We'll send her a review request. Let's say we send that to her via her phone. She opens it and maybe she's incentivized with loyalty points to actually leave that review. In doing so, we've ideally retained Jane as a customer because now when she wants to make another purchase, your brand is going to be top of mind because she's going to know that she has loyalty points to use. So that's everything. I do want to save some time for questions. Um, so I'll pause here. Awesome. That was fantastic, Emma. No surprise uh, from someone who knows Yapo's products so well. Um, we did have a question from Ari Sutherland who's asking, um, great that Yapo also houses customer data. What are the data export integrations available with platforms such as Klaviyo or Facebook? Yeah, great question. So we do have a direct integration with several, with many different uh, data platforms. So for example, um, I personally work with the Klaviyo integration on like a day-to-day -day basis. And so basically Yapo and Klaviyo are sharing all the customer data attributes. Um, and why that's helpful is, okay, let's say within Yapo, we've created a very nuanced customer segment. Let's say a customer who has left a five-star review but has not yet referred their friend and we want to send like an email blast to those customers, we can create that segment within Yapo and then leverage those same customer attributes in Klaviyo to create the same segment and send a targeted email. Um, and for, of course, brands that we don't have an integration with, we see webhook, um, webhooks kind of used quite frequently, APIs, whatever you need to do in order um, to kind of integrate that data so you're actually able to capitalize on it. Awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, thanks so much for, for that, uh, Emma. There's a few more questions, but uh, we'll have to leave that to you to hop. Actually, a bunch more questions piling in, in the Q&A. So if you can answer <laughs> those when you hop off, that'd be great. But before you do, hop sure. off, we're going to do uh, Yapo's special giveaway, which is the uh, Espresso, Machinetta, and Cup. 
Um, as Emma was saying, it sounds like it's a great product. So uh, someone's going to be walking with that. So with that, I'm just going to close my eyes. Here we go. Roll of the dice. Just picking. It's a good one, guys. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we have M M Mika Taylor. Um, so Mika Taylor, you are the lucky winner uh, of Yapo's espresso giveaway. So congratulations, Mika. I have your contact information. And yeah, we'll be in touch with you right afterwards to get that sent over. So congrats. And thanks so much uh, for joining us, Emma. Hope you have a great day. Of course. Time. Of course. Thanks, guys. And if you have any other questions, feel free to send them to webinar at yachtpo.com and we'll get back to you. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, we're going to keep the party going. Hopefully people are uh, excited from what they've seen so far. Happy to welcome uh, my friend Bob to the stage. How are you, Bob? Doing great. How's it going, Chris? That's doing quite well. So I'll let you uh, tee up your, your slide deck there on the screen share and I'll give you a quick intro. Yeah, sure. Wow. Well, so so Bob is the director of sales. That's not what I'm laughing at, but I'm laughing at his fun fact, which is that he's a Cleveland Browns NFL fan, which, man, what I mean, it's fun lately. I'll give you that. Uh, maybe not for the last 25 years. You've had about 25 quarterbacks, but recently I'll give you that. So that's that's that justifies. Um, but, yeah, so Bob, yeah, Gatsby enables brands to scale up their micro-influencer and ambassador strategies with ease. I think everybody's going to be really excited by what Bob has to say about Gatsby. You know, when you think of the future of fashion apparel, you can't really think about that without thinking about Gatsby as a part of that equation. I'm confident people will see that. So with that, the floor is all yours, Bob. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, we'll have some fun with this. So I'll just start with, um, you know, what the future is and what it's looking like and, and what brands are, are catching on to pretty quick. Um, and then we'll get into um, how you actually accomplish that. So when it comes to influencer marketing, the big shift in strategy is focusing more on your customers and less for uh, less on celebrities for hire. So I feel like a lot of brands do sometimes put off influencer marketing to like the last thing they think of in their in their funnel, just because um, yeah, there was a lot of of manual work that goes into the traditional way of doing it versus um, how we're approaching it and helping brands um, approach it in a much more efficient way by focusing on the customer. Um, so like the traditional way, it's typically like cold outreach. Um, celebrity for hire focus. You often have to deal with agents, especially if it's a really high follower count um, and it's one-to-one -one communication. Um, seeding isn't very predictable. You might just give away a ton of free product and not actually get anything out of it. And um, typically you're working off, you know, your inbox or, or Google Sheets or, or DMing. Um, and lastly, the engagement rates are much lower on those types of posts, like typically one to two percent versus um, the customer focused way of doing it where they're actually getting around seven to 10% engagement rate on their posts. And the benefits of focusing on your customers is that it's a really low barrier to entry so that these are your end consumers. They already know you, they already have used your products. Um, so they're super familiar. And yes, they might have a smaller following, but much higher authenticity in the actual posts that they'll put out because they already love your brands. Um, it's less expensive to start with your customers as well. Um, they're usually pumped to just even get a discount off their next order for like a post or a story, as opposed to paying someone that has never used your products to post about you and you're paying for that, that one post. And um, the last beautiful thing here is that you're able to leverage all of the tools that you know and love today to do this. You don't have to add um, an entire new platform. You'll be able to use everything that that you're already using to do this. Um, so I thought this was pretty cool. I actually recently just made this um, and just a, like a really clear cut example of why there's such a shift to focusing on customers. So this is Tasha from The Bachelor, Bachelorette. Um, and this is actually an influencer post that she's doing. Um, and I just thought it was interesting that, you know, she has 1.8 million followers, uh, but this post has a 1.8% engagement rate. So, um, and that's including comments. I think it has about 80 comments right now. And then you could contrast that to um, Famous Footwear uses Gatsby, and this is one of their customers. And uh, this person only has around 1,500 followers, but her posts are extremely authentic and they're getting, um, you know, 10.5% engagement there. And what brands are realizing that is that it's a lot better to have a lot more of these on the right-hand side than you know, having one or two or, or, you know, a small amount of some celebrity, celebrity focused cam campaign. 
So how do we do this? So um, this, these will be familiar brands here. So Volcom is actually a Gatsby customer as well. And um, what, the way we approach this is wherever you're capturing customer data, we basically look at that as an opportunity to also ask for the Instagram handle. Um, and you can really do this anywhere in the customer journey. So Volcom loves including it um, in their welcome pop-up. They wanna usually capture this as early as on um, as possible. You could contrast that to like Pair of Thieves or Fashion Nova uses us for this as well, where they're asking for the social handle on the order confirmation page. You know, they literally just bought something, great time to ask them to, um, you know, share what they bought or just get more involved with you on social. Um, and fun fact there is we find that around 15 to 20% of all visitors that are giving their email address at some point will give their handle as well, and it's totally optional. Um, so over a few months, our customers will um, uh, capture about 10 to 25% of their database in handles um, within the first few months. We also recommend creating a landing page um, just because it's a great spot to like weave into the post-purchase experience. Um, so when someone does purchase, letting them know about a program that you have, this is Penny Skateboards. Um, but even if you already have um, historic customers built up, like let's say you have you know 50 or 100,000 contacts, it's never too late to start capturing handle. You can create a landing page and just direct them to it um, and very quickly bubble up a great segment of those nano and micro influencers that you can work with. Um, and then another familiar brand here, Princess Polly, uses us as well specifically for their college ambassador program. And the story with them is that they had been actually capturing handles for a while. They're an extremely social brand, as you know. Um, but Tori on their marketing team was only able to work with those that applied that were in like a few different uh, college campuses. Um, so they had thousands of handles that they just couldn't leverage and they're using Gatsby to engage and get everyone involved in the college ambassador program by, by helping qualify them and also reaching out and, and, and kicking off the, the communication there. What you can expect here is around 25 to 40% of all profiles collected when you're doing this strategy have greater than 1,000 followers. Um, if you want to look at anyone over maybe like 500 followers as being a, a possible advocate for the brand, that's usually around 60%. Um, and then how do you use these insights? So our entire purpose is to make these insights in all of the tools you already use. So I'll give like a few different examples here, but. Uh, wherever you're storing that customer data, like we'll take Clavio for example, we're passing over all those insights as uh, profile properties and you can completely automate off of that. Another cool thing here too is we let those systems know when someone actually posts about the brand and you can automate off of that as well. So typically what folks will do is they'll just create a simple automation where if you have over a thousand followers, you might get an email that looks a little bit like this. And this is from Famous Footwear. And it's them reaching out, asking for a post, and they're giving a, a discount up here, a $20 off e-voucher for them to use if they do the post. So they're not giving it out up front. They're waiting for them to post, um, and then, then they'll get the reward afterwards. But what's interesting here is that um, it had roughly double the average open rate of all the other types of emails they send out. And uh, about 12% of people who open this actually converted into influencers. And those influencers had still around that 9, 10% engagement rate, which is what we're looking for. And uh, here's another example here as well. This is totally automated, by the way, and this is like a tools company. Um, same thing, offering a, a discount or just something small in exchange for a post. And since they're actual customers that are receiving this, they're usually thrilled and, and more than willing to do that because they're already um, involved with the brands. And then the next part of this is closing the loop on it so um, that you can automate actually rewarding them as well. So because we're letting your systems know when someone mentions you, you can then deliver the reward when they actually go and do the post of the story. Um, so we kind of close the loop there. And it's nice because not only are you driving top of the funnel with the content that's going out, but um, you're also getting repeat sales with you know the incentive that you just gave a loyal customer. They're gonna go and use that um, to buy something else. Um, so we close the loop on actually rewarding folks. Um, and then this is brand new in just the uh, theme of Gorgeous here, but we now integrate with Gorgeous and a lot of merchants that 
we're speaking to and are already Gatsby customers are really, really pumped about this. Um, so we're sending all of those insights now into Gorgeous as profile properties and also letting Gorgeous know when someone actually mentions the brand. And um, there's some excitement around some really cool use cases here, like prioritizing tickets. If someone has like a certain amount of followers, you know, you want to make sure they have a, a stellar customer experience there. Or when someone gives a five star review um, to a ticket, maybe ask them to post about the brand and incentivize it a little bit. And then, of course, like you can create macros and, and all of that, that technical stuff that can take into account um, someone's level of influence. Um, so I'll wrap it up there. Um, if you're curious to try this out, we are um, offering qualified merchants their first 100 influencers totally free. We'll find 100 for you right off the bat to um, so the first 10 that, that reach out. And um, you can email me directly. And um, yeah, the last part here is the uh, giveaway. We're doing a, a three month supply of uh, super coffee, which is really good. Amazing. That was awesome, Bob. Uh, I'm confident that the brands with us today are excited about this and ready to get started. In fact, uh, Benjamin had said uh, he started collecting Instagram handles from all of his clients um, through Clavio pop-up and form. Even if no one understands how awesome Gatsby is, one day they will thank me. <laughs> so it sounds like he's a big fan of that uh, as well. Uh, Thanks, and Mika Taylor, Mika Taylor is asking for you to put your email back up for one minute. So maybe you can just tell us your email. Um, oh yeah, sure. It's uh, Bob at Gatsby AI. I'll put it in chat right now as well. Gotcha. All right, ahead of you. Perfect. Uh, quick question for you, Bob, before we let you off the hook here, is you know, what portion of customers typically provide their Instagram? Do you have numbers around that? Yeah. So usually it's around fifteen to twenty percent, but it really depends on the industry, right? Like a brand like Princess Polly, tons of people are are willing to give their handle, or a brand like Fashion Nova, versus. Um, yeah, tools today, they're, they sell power drills, right? Not not all of their consumers are going to be super active on Instagram, but they still get a ton of value from it from the folks that actually do give their handle. So um, yeah, on average, it's about uh, 15 to 20%, but uh, depends on the industry. Got it. And then last question is, uh, you know, if a brand hasn't been collecting Instagram handles up till now, is it is it too late to start? I'm, I'm assuming not. No, yeah. It's... Um, it's quite easy. It's actually incredible. Like when you're, I'm on the sales side working with merchants, they might have like a hundred, 200,000 contacts in their database, but they've never been collecting handle. And um, literally in, in a week, what you can do is just set up a landing page to start asking for it. And even just send out one or two emails to uh, the database or maybe everyone that's made a purchase in the last year, just let them know that you're starting this program. Um, and again, these are customers. They, they love getting messages from you in the first place. Um, it's never too late to start doing it, and that's that's how you do it. Awesome. Cool. And with that, we're just going to do your prize giveaway. So Gatsby has put up a three-month supply of Super Coffee, which is a which is an awesome prize. Just going to quickly scroll through here, and we'll pick some lucky winner. And for the three-month giveaway of Super Coffee, we have Benedict Marsh. So congratulations, Benedict. I have your information, and we'll be in touch with you uh, this week to get that sent over. So thanks uh, so much for putting that up, Gatsby, and thanks so much, Bob, for joining us. Great presentation. All righty. Cool. Um, all right. So next up, I'm um, very fortunate to be speaking on behalf of Gorgeous. So I'm doubling as uh, MC and presenter today. And so, yeah, I lead tech partnerships at Gorgeous, which means I have the fortunate job of getting to work with uh, great tech partners, like uh, many of which are on the panel with me today. And so Gorgeous, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, we're a customer support help desk, basically managing all of your customer interactions uh, pre and post purchase uh, in a single um, help desk that connects all of your different channels into it. So today I'll be talking about how um, you can really think of your customer support platform um, as a great way to prep for the future of fashion apparel because, you know, customers are expecting stellar support, immediate support more than ever. And so you really need to be tuned in to all the different channels that your customers might be shopping. So I'm excited to speak with you guys today. So as I mentioned, uh, Gorgeous, we're built for e-commerce. We, you know, we, were, we were built as a Shopify app to start, and we've since scaled to over 6,000 um, D2C brands of all different shapes and sizes, as you can see here. We just locked down um, Netflix's um, commerce store that they just launched on Shopify, for instance. So I'm really proud of the different brands that uh, work with us today. 
And so related to this, this presentation, we're just going to start off with some background information um, and then we're going to dive into our product to talk about how this is really making an impact. So let's just talk about why m consumers message and interact with a brand in the first place, strictly in the, in the D2C sense online, uh, removing the, the brick and mortar piece away from it. And so we know based on data, Facebook did a great study that, you know, over 75% of the time, a customer is actually engaging with you, whether it's through live chat or, or another means with the intent to make a purchase. You know, we know as consumers, we're all busy professionals. If you're actually going to take the time to message into a brand, you're definitely um, have, you know, some curiosity or intention of making a purchase. So it's important as a brand that you have a perfect infrastructure in place to answer those questions as fast as possible. Um, to help drive those conversion rates up. And so that's critical. And so obviously as a support help desk, that is critical to our entire mission. And so you can see that our main mission here is to empower all merchants to deliver that exceptional customer experience. And in modern times, because expectations of consumers are sky high, really the, the, the holy grail of modern CX is you know, fast, personalized and accurate or great um, customer experience that you're delivering to your consumers. And so this is so important to us that we've actually gamified this approach. And what we've done is we've taken our 6,000 plus merchants who are using Gorgeous to power their customer support. And we've placed them into five different bins or support levels based on their performance. And so five being the absolute best. And so one of the key metrics that we use to track the performance of our brands is the response time. So how fast are you actually responding to a customer inquiry? This could be someone messaged you about a broken product, or this could be a pre-sale live chat, someone's messaging you in with a product question with the intent to purchase. And we have fantastic data that shows there's a big correlation between um, response time, so how fast you're answering and getting back to customers, and lifetime value, average order value, uh, and your churn rate. And so it's huge on retention and conversion rates. And so we put these brands in these different buckets, you know, less than 10 minutes. This is what we've come to expect from Amazon, for instance, they're, you know, the leaders in terms of you know excellent customer service, that's where we want more of our customers to be. Currently only 3% of our customer base is there and we're doing everything we can in our product roadmap and working with our brands to help drive them towards that four and five level category. So before I jump into Gorgeous's product, really just wanna identify three key areas where traditional help desks or just you know the support uh, infrastructure of a brand is falling short. That's really preventing them from delivering an exceptional customer experience for their customers um, but also, uh, more importantly, perhaps, is, is missing out on huge sales opportunities. And that's a big focus uh, of what Gorgeous is doing is like, look, we're not just there for bad things that happen on the post-purchase support side. We're also here to help drive more sales on the pre-purchase. And hopefully I'll show you that today. And so some three things that are critical um, to modern help desk and just CX in general is you need to be automating, right? Obviously, as you scale, you can't afford to be doing things on a manual basis. Anything repetitive uh, is, is not something you should be doing. Uh, in a manual fashion, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to be slow to respond to customers, which you just can't afford to do. Um, lack of customer intelligence and personalization. I mean, a good example, um, Bob just did a great job showing this new gorgeous Gatsby integration where now we're piping in social media, Instagram data into gorgeous, which is just one of many integration examples where we're, you know, we have a bunch of information, say, from Shopify on a customer, but now we have even more information from all these different great integrations. So if you're if you're if you're using a help desk right now and they don't have all these great integrations and, 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 and data enrichment about your customer that you can leverage both manually and automated, then that's that's just a huge missed opportunity. And then finally, perhaps most importantly, there's a huge buzzword in the industry right now, which is omni-channel, meaning that you're selling across all the different channels, but more importantly, those channels are consistently integrated with one another. So whether I'm a consumer and I'm on your, your website, I'm on mobile, I'm on, you know, a marketplace, I'm on social media, I'm getting the same consistent experience from you. And that's key. And so you can't have these be disparate, um, working in distinct fashions. And so gorgeous, we are a complete omni-channel solution, meaning all of your engagement channels, live chat, email, SMS, uh, social medias, it's all pulled into the same single view on our dashboard. So it doesn't matter what channels a customer is engaging with you and you have all the information you need um, just in one place, which is huge. All right, so enough chatter about that. Let's just dive right into it. So what is Gorgeous doing um, you know, to really level things up um, and particularly for fashion and apparel brands that are with us today? So first and foremost, we're always analyzing uh, the engagements and the interactions that our brands are having with their customers, the end consumers. So we did this massive analysis of uh, tens of thousands 
of customer conversations that our brands were having with consumers to understand what is the most commonly asked questions and what are the, the things that we can really uh, make it easy for brands to automate and deliver more you know, faster and better support on. And so you can see here, and this is really important for brands with us today, you can see the breakdown of these, these, uh, these tens of thousands of conversations uh, and they're categorized by type of, of, of inquiry essentially. And so 33% of all customer tickets, so meaning all of your support volume um, is likely uh, related to order status, which is a huge volume, but honestly, it's one of the simplest things you should be able to just wipe away. And so I won't get too deep into it, but based on our machine learning and automation capabilities, we can basically remove 33% of your, order, uh, your ticket volume simply through automation. So because we have an integration with Shopify, a customer reaches out and says, hey, where is my order, Wismo? We'll detect that, we'll automatically fire a pre-can response, we'll pull in Shopify data variables, we'll send and close that ticket so an agent never even knew it existed, right? And then I'll talk about also how we have self-serve model now where you can basically deflect um, these incoming tickets as well. So that's step one, you need to be automating. You can't afford to be answering this much volume. Um, so that's, that's important. But there's a few other categories here that while in smaller percentages are still massively important. Pre-sale specific ones. So for instance, product suggestion, product question, pre-order question, product feedback, product availability. These are pre-sale questions, which if you're not answering in a fast and efficient possible, uh, you know, way, you're, you're missing out on these sales altogether. And considering that some brands do, you know, five, 10, a hundred thousand tickets a month, this, this really adds up to a meaningful uh, revenue figure. And so this is huge for gorgeous to make it easy for brands to answer these questions as fast as possible, especially since they are so important in the pre-sale uh, avenue. So I'll just jump through some, some pretty table stakes features of Gorgeous and then I'll dive into more relevant um, features for uh, fashion apparel brands specifically. So first up, we integrate tightly with Shopify and a few other e-com platforms. So all of a customer's information is on display. So when you're talking to them as, a, as an agent powered experience, you can leverage that, you can take actions like the ones seen here, but we can also automate a lot of these actions that you would have to take just by detecting what a customer is asking you. Personalization at scale, that's key. Certainly in the fashion and apparel industry, your consumers want to feel like they identify with your brand. And so it's really important that you deliver personalized experiences. The messaging needs to really fit your um, the brand that you're, you're trying to establish. And so, um, yes, we're able to automate a lot and make things fast, but we're also not trying to compromise so much on the personalization side. So for instance, macros, pre-can responses, you can build out hundreds of these based on whatever scenarios you're likely to encounter as a business. So order status, for instance, you can easily build one out. You can personalize all the messaging to fit your brand style, but then just embed these Shopify variables, which will, the moment that you hit send, it'll, it'll make a call to through the API to Shopify um, your customer record, and then it'll populate that data and send that message right away, which you can do manually as an agent, or you can have that be automated as well. And then the final piece here, our machine learning. So we're constantly analyzing what our the, the customers are saying, we're tagging these tickets uh, with a specific tag so we can triage them into the appropriate bucket. So you can imagine as your brand scales, you might be starting to have thousands and thousands of tickets. You have you know maybe five to 10 plus agents on your team. Maybe they're responsible for managing different types of tickets. A senior agent might be responsible for handing VIP tickets of high average order value customers. And so we could tag a ticket based on that um, and put that into the appropriate bin. So when you clock in as an agent, all of the tickets have been triaged into your appropriate bin, as opposed to having to sift through thousands and thousands of tickets to see whose uh, ticket belongs to who. All right, so the, the more important piece here is the omni-channel. So I mentioned you can't have segregated, um, disjointed channels. Um, as a brand, you need to be you know, consistently integrated across channels. And so that's one thing that Gorgeous is known for is we're, we're everywhere on all the different channels doesn't matter how a customer is interacting with you, we're pulling in that conversation and making it look the exact same for an agent. Um, and you have all the information you need to, to deliver a fast and personalized experience. And so Instagram is, is a great example. So whether you're, you're, you're posting on your Instagram and someone's leaving a really favorable or a really negative comment on your Instagram, you obviously don't want negative comments to just be sitting there. We'll detect that. We'll create a ticket inside of Gorgeous alerting an agent, say, hey, negative social sentiment detected. It'll alert a support agent so they can be proactive and reach out and say, hey, you know, sorry to hear you had a bad experience. We're working hard to rectify that. Here's a 5% discount code for your next purchase. You know, hope you have a great day, which is awesome. And then we also just released Instagram DM capabilities. So now all of your Instagram DM conversations will be um, 
basically made uh, create a ticket inside of Gorgeous. And so all those conversations can live now in Gorgeous. And what's really important about that is as a brand, as, as you scale, certainly the people managing your social media, creating these beautiful posts, so they're, they're not the people who are necessarily product experts and then handling, you know, sales conversations or support conversations. And so those, those are typically two different types of teams. And so now you can have your, your marketing team go to work and do what they do best. And then any conversations that want to happen thereafter, pre-sale or post-purchase, now agents who are product experts can take over those conversations because they're going to be completely mirrored inside of our platform. So this is by far the number one product request we've had over the last two years, and it's finally available. Another huge one on the automation front that's really relevant to fashion apparel brands is our self-serve flow. And so we're a ticketing-based platform for sure, but we also want to try to minimize the creation of tickets in the first place. And so one of the ways we're able to do that is with our new self-serve widget, which can just pop up on a, a website. So Princess Polly, for instance, one of our customers, um, they, they use our self-serve flow. So you go on their website, um, it'll pop up. You can put your email or order ID, and now actually you can just put your phone number in as well. And you can do things like track, return, cancel, um, and then report an issue, or if need be, you can escalate to a live agent. And so we're seeing brands start to automate and deflect, you know, 20 to 40% of their would-be um, support volume, which is huge. And the best thing is, is your customers are getting the information they need um, in a timely fashion. And then the final piece here, and I'll wrap up, is on the analytics side. So we're a support dash, you know, we're a support product, and we track all the important support metrics like first response time. But we also are trying to create as many sales opportunities for you, and we track that really accurately as well. And so here's just a, a real example of a brand from almost two years ago, uh, who in a single day generated over twenty-two thousand dollars in sales just from live chat. And so they had this huge promotion on. Um, it was just before the holidays, as you can see. Brand, uh, customers were messaging in pre, pre-purchase questions. They were answering them um, lightning quick, as you can see, under 10 minutes. And we have great data to show that you know your conversion rate goes up by four or five X if you respond to a pre-sale chat in under 10 minutes. Like it's just, we see this time and time again, this is a, a golden rule now. And so this is just the tip of the iceberg of some of the revenue that brands are able to unlock using Gorgeous. And then just to finish up here, you know, Gorgeous on its own is, is a fantastic product. We're really proud of that. But when you start factoring in all the different integrations that are, you know, plugged into our product, it really transforms it into something special. You know, Yapo is, is a fantastic integration partner of ours. Gatsby is, is a new integration partner of ours. So the use cases are just piling up. It's, it's becoming easier than ever before to answer like pure support post-purchase inquiries, but also Really importantly, it's, it's, it's becoming easier than ever to generate pre-sale conversion tactics as well, which um, we're really excited about. And just, just because Yapo is with us today, I wanted to highlight our new integration with Yapo. So here's an example of our help desk in action. Um, this is it. We're inside of a ticket with a customer, John Doe. You can see all their information here on the side here. And with the Yapo integration, you can see all their, their, their loyalty points. You can see all the reviews they've left, the average rating of reviews, how many they've left. You can see the individual reviews. You can see what they're typically commenting on, for instance, and you can take action like reward points, right? So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great use case in itself. So this is just the tip of the iceberg on how our integration stack, which we have over 50 now, is really adding even more value. And that's it. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. If you're interested in checking out Gorgeous, we have a two-month free offer on right now, which I can promise you is more than you'll need to, uh, to see the ROI on a tool um, like ours. And yeah, feel free to reach out to me at chrisatgorgeous.com. I'll answer any questions that I see are popping up here once I hop off. Uh, but just to keep the party rolling here, I'm just going to quickly choose a winner. Uh, we give away a set of AirPod Pros. My friend Shaq here with my favorite GIF is going to help me give it away. So here we go. going to pick one lucky winner here. All right, uh, so Michaela Frazier, um, congratulations. You're the lucky winner of our AirPod Pro giveaway. I just uh, took down your information, so thanks so much. All right, that was a lot of talking. I'm going to stop now and, yeah, welcome our friend Ryan from Sezzle to the stage. How are you, Ryan? Oh, we can't hear you, Ryan. I think if you hit that... Uh, that microphone button and then select uh, the appropriate uh, mic, you should be able to hear you. There we go. I can hear you now. Awesome. Cool. You go ahead and tee up your uh, slide deck there, Ryan. I'll give you a quick intro. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. We're really happy to welcome Ryan to the stage. Ryan is a senior account executive um, at Sezzle. His fun fact is he's an average bridge jumper into water 
until he tore his meniscus and needed four surgeries. So I don't know if he's still an average bridge jumper, but he's certainly an avid salesperson. Really happy to have you on stage with us, Ryan. The, the floor is all yours. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I was going to say I've got to switch up my fun fact next time. I'm sure we got a little overlap from the last webinar. <laughs> But anyways, thanks for the introduction. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with um, either Sezzle or Buy Now, Pay Later or short-term installments in general, um, today we're gonna walk through a couple of different topics. First, kind of setting the stage on, you know, really why has this become such a, a explosive industry, um, particularly related to e-commerce. Of course, Chris mentioned Omnichannel, um, what's turned into such a, a gigantic buzzword now. Um, and we're seeing, you know, this same use case be very applicable for in-store experiences as well. But for today, we'll, we'll specifically focus on, um, you know, the online aspect of it um, and really what you can do, not only how you as just a brand in general can capitalize on um, a younger and more engaged consumer base that is really starting to look away from the traditional means of credit, um, as well as some of the I've uh, learned from our vast shopper base of over 6 million shoppers, um, particularly those that are shopping at our fashion and apparel brands, um, like at Target or with Untuck It um, and some of those sites. So in general, some of the trends that we're seeing right now, um, nearly 25, well actually over 25% of the dollars spent on holiday gifts last year um, were spent online. And we're seeing, of course, considerable year over year growth as it pertains to just the online channel in general. Um, and now where do payments fit into that? So what we're seeing uh, in the shift with consumer behavior in general is customers are now craving more valuable from more value from their payment methods. Um, so really looking at, you know, which payment methods are offering a better, you know, return on fees, uh, better, you know, late payment history, um, and really just making it as much easy or as easy as possible for them to, you know, check out on a site. So transparency and trust when you're looking at, you know, the terms when you're signing up to use a specific provider, um, how transparent are they? How, how well and how easy is it to read into, you know, what kind of solution you are going to, you know, involve yourself with? And then control. Are you able to reschedule? Are you being charged interest? Um, do you have ways to, you know, access your payments uh, on a mobile app or things like that? So these are things that consumers, especially young ones, are considering. And then when you look at the buy now, pay later market in general, over 40% of millennials in the U.S. have used a buy now, pay later in the last year. And they're expecting that over $100 billion worth of transactions will be processed by 2024. To give you a little context of how much growth is to come, Sezzle is one of the major players in, in buy now, pay later with nearly 40,000 retail partners, over 6 million uh, users active. And last year we processed over a billion dollars alone. And so there's so much growth and opportunity in this space, and we're continuing to add hundreds and hundreds of merchants on a uh, monthly and even weekly basis. So really what made this interesting for you know, our consumer base and, and for those of you out there that aren't using an existing buy now, pay later product, or those of you that maybe are using one or two or are trying to determine whether or not it makes sense to add another one, some of the main reasons, at least what we're seeing from our shopper base, is that they're looking for budgeting, they're looking to, you know, afford to, uh, you know, purchase products that they may have not been able to purchase otherwise, interest, and then avoiding that increase in credit card spend, like we mentioned before. Um, so just to quickly touch on, you know, what does the product look like itself? Um, it's very simple. It's designed to be simple. Of course, we know any addition to the checkout flow could potentially harm convert. Or in higher flow, whether it be our core product. Um, our long-term product, which is in partnership with Allied Bank, um, it's designed to get the consumer through the steps in as quick, uh, as little time as possible. So we allow shoppers to pay in four interest-free installments over the course of six weeks. You as a merchant pay a slightly higher processing fee, but ultimately what you see from these customers is more engagement, uh, more purchases throughout the year, it tends to be even two to two and a half times more frequent purchases at your specific brand on a yearly basis compared to simply checking out with a credit card, PayPal, or, or any existing method. Um, and one of the major benefits that you're gonna see is of course, lifting an average order value and conversion rate, which we'll touch on here a, a little bit later. But just to give you a quick background on, on who we are and, and what we do, again, we're based out of Minneapolis um, and now have global headquarters in uh, both Toronto um, and a few different countries in Europe, France, and Italy. Um, and really the biggest thing uh, from my perspective about what makes Sezzle different in general 
is the fact that not only are we a, a public benefit corp, which is listed on this page here, uh, but we also became a certified B Corp. So for us, this was really important when we look at, you know, differentiating ourselves in the market. Um, in the next couple of slides, we'll really kind of break down why that B Corp status is not only going to help you attract these younger customers, um, but it really aligns with what we're seeing in the market of customers valuing sustainability um, over, you know, the brands that they've traditionally purchased with and, um, you know, haven't done much to, you know, offset their impact on, on the environment in general. So what I mean by that is we introduced a product last year called Sezzle Up, which will actually allow shoppers to opt into credit reporting. So this was the second most asked for feature from our buy now, pay later customers looking for a way to, you know, improve their financial livelihood through their common purchases, especially those that are already making, you know, on time payments and there is a significant opportunity for many of these customers as you see some of the you know anecdotal comments on the side of shoppers seeing upwards of you know a 62 point increase which ultimately all of us and i would assume many of which who, who have credit cards you know just how how well this uh, the increases of, of your score are going to allow you to um, not only whether it be get a, a better rate for your mortgage or access a better credit card with better rewards and we realize ultimately that a customer of ours um, is going to have a better financial livelihood if they're able to see their score build through our tool. And not only can they build their score with Sezzle, but they're also given direct access to effectively a database of financial literacy information um, called Sezzle U. So this is designed somewhat in parallel with um, some of our initiatives, like what we just launched. Uh, we're planting a new tree for each new user. We give one or two uh, full ride scholarships to emerging technology students on an annual basis. And so parallel to those initiatives, we want to make sure that all of our customers, not only are they taking advantage of, you know, the way to avoid paying interest and split their payments up, aligning them with their paychecks and allowing it to be a little easier to check out, but now they can learn and understand a bit more about how can I not only use buy now, pay later to make my life easier, but now how can I see, you know, all the different options um, that are available to me. Um, and for many of our shoppers that are lower credit, lower income, maybe have lesser access to, um, you know, education. This is a spectacular free or pro bono tool for our users, um, which has actually in turn uh, really had a, a significant material impact on engagement where we'll, we're seeing the top 10% of our users, most of which are enrolled in Sezzle Up, are purchasing with Sezzle over 45 times and not just 45 different installments, 45 unique purchases on an annual basis. And that's a, a market of, you know, engaged customers that you are going to be given direct access to if you offer our payment method on your site or any buy now, pay later in general. But really, we're seeing why that engagement um, from building credit and from aligning with B Corp status and focusing on sustainability has given us a, a significant leg up in this industry overall. So what some of the uh, results you can expect to see with Sezzle um, are, of course, going to be new shoppers. So really, our focus is not going to be simply on converting the shoppers that have already been on your site and, and check out consistently. Of course, there will be a small amount of cannibalization, but most of the new shop or most of the shoppers that are going to be coming through Sezzle on your site after you add us are going to be net new and incremental to your brand. So for fashion and apparel sites, we tend to see an average order value lift of anywhere from 20 to 30 percent in some cases over 40 and 50 percent um, if you are a brand that has you know an average um, somewhere around there that's where we tend to see a more exacerbated increase in average order value and then the conversion rate overall so we're seeing a five to ten percent increase in your overall conversion rate and many uh, many of these reasons are, are boiled down to how we're getting customers through the funnel and the great thing about our proprietary algorithms internally are we're able to approve um, nearly everyone that comes through the funnel. It's about 90%. I think the last stat we, uh, we announced was 92%. Um, and on, for many transactions, we're trying to approve everything under 300 unless we see it's fraud. And so just to go a little bit more in depth to why a buy now pay later is going to give you access to a new base of customers, it's because these customers either don't have access to credit, they're in a subprime category where many of our competitors have publicly said that they're not going to approve a shopper at a sub 600 FICO uh, score. And we know that that is uh, really limiting 
the success of a buy now pay later on your site. And so a, a, along with this opportunity for you to get access to you know, a group of shoppers that may not be able to check out on your site right now, whether that be because they don't have credit, um, they have a low limit, they're carrying a balance and having a really difficult time paying that off. Our shoppers are able to use Sezzle. Not only can they build their score with us, but they can reschedule their payments for free. They can push them out into the future. Um, and they can also align them with their paycheck to make it easier for, you know, debiting on that account when they actually, you know, get paid. And then finally, we're seeing a really significant preference shift in or, or towards alternative payments. Um, where 42% of shoppers in the US aren't gonna complete a purchase if their favorite payment method isn't available. 82% of our shoppers see Sezzle as their preferred method of payment. And now with, with already 6 million shoppers and um, of course, looking back at the growth statistics and seeing the industry nowhere near um, its climax, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for you to get access to one, a customer base that we already have tapped into, and then two, the customer base that we're continually tapping into with these unique product modifications in general. And so finally, we, we surveyed a, a significant amount of our shoppers, as I mentioned before, uh, back in December, purchases from fashion and apparel brands. And I just wanted to highlight some of, uh, really some of the learnings that we had from these fashion and apparel shoppers. One, nearly 100% of our shoppers said that they would pay or spend more if Sezzle was uh, offered as an option. 84% of these users trust us to keep their info secure. And then 80% of these users were not going to make their purchase if Sezzle wasn't offered. And then ultimately, as we talk about the pandemic and um, as Emma mentioned, coming to a close, we saw so much positive sentiment around some of the new product features that we rolled out during COVID. Um, and I think that was really articulated through the survey of 75% of customers saying that Sezzle helped them manage spend during COVID. And what we saw was, you know, allowing shoppers to increase the amount of free reschedules that they had. Previously, it was one, we instituted two. At one point, we offered three. And this was, we even saw just overwhelming responses on, on Trustpilot of people writing in about, you know, being furloughed or laid off or just, you know, having a more difficult time making their purchases and that we gave them even two to four to six weeks of additional time to pay. And it allowed them to not have to either dip into carrying a balance on their credit card, um, which ultimately is, is just never a good, good. Um, so really that's, that's what we have for you guys today. Um, I hope that was informational. I know for those of you that were on probably the last webinar, some of that may have been a little bit redundant. Um, but when you look overall at, you know, uh, fashion and apparel shoppers, particularly Gen Z and millennials, they will continue to shift away from, uh, from utilizing credit, um, uh, where we've seen a shift from, you know, initially when I started about three years ago nearly, you know, I, I think it was 40% of our transactions were debit in the US, it's nearly 80 now. And so that that trend is going to continue. Um, and I'm excited to, you know, work with with some of you guys, hopefully in the audience and, and show you that trend as well. Awesome. Fantastic. Yet again, Ryan, no surprise. Um, yeah, definitely encourage any brands with us who aren't using a, a BMPL type solution to, to check out Sezzle for sure and get in contact with Ryan. Uh, a few questions before we let you off. So uh, I like the stat you had around trust. I think it was like 84% trust Sezzle with their data. I think, you know, to me, that was one of the things I thought of when like buy now, pay later started to become more prominent. Um, can you just expand a little bit upon that on, you know, from the consumer and the brand side, like just how important that trust really is? You know, I think being BMPL is, is unique in that regard. So yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more context on that. Yeah. And so, I mean, especially when you look at, there, there are so many different retailers right now that offer, you know, one, two, three, four, buy now, pay later options, or those that are going to be offering PayPal and some offer crypto now. And it's, it's, yeah. it can be difficult and sometimes overwhelming to figure out which method, especially newer methods that you're not familiar with. Of course, shoppers are going to always gravitate towards the one that feels the most comfortable. And so that's, that's what our entire solution is all about is uh, really fostering that sort of comfortability and showing our customers that we are, you know, effectively walking the walk, 
Um, so when we say, you know, it's all about transparency and it's not making money off of our shopper base and it's, it's uh, you know, ultimately making money from the merchants who then receive, you know, the value add of, of higher transaction volumes and things like that. So when we showcase, you know, when I mentioned the initiatives of planting a tree for, for each new user or customers coming in with, uh, it, let's say, financial hardship, they're missing payments, they're in a difficult situation we will pause their account at no no charge um, we're not going to be you know compounding interest charges or late fees every time they miss a payment if you miss one late payment it's a one-time ten dollar late fee it's not every time you miss one of the four installments and so i think all of these different features the rescheduling capability they, they just kind of culminate into that that foster trust that i mentioned at the beginning awesome yeah that was great i appreciate that um, and then before we let you go, we are going to do your prize giveaway. So Cezel has put up a JBL Flip 5 Bluetooth speaker, which is a fantastic giveaway. So real quick, just going to scan through the audience here and see who's getting that lucky speaker. All right. So I have Victoria Coleman. Um, congratulations. You're the Bluetooth speaker winner. Um, Victoria, we have your contact info. We will be in touch and we'll get that sent over. So uh, yeah, thanks again, Ryan. It was a pleasure. And uh, I hope you have a great 4th of July weekend, my friend. Thanks, Chris. Uh, excited to hear the rest of you guys. All right, take care. All right, we're going to finish up strong here, welcoming our friend Cena to the stage from Tap Car. All right, thank you so much, Chris. This has been uh, super informational. So really appreciate you putting this together. Perfect, yeah. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and get your screen share, and I'll just give you a quick intro. Yep. So yeah, Sina, he is the co-founder and COO of Tapcart. I think people are going to be really thrilled. Um, uh, I've seen him speak before. It's great. He, uh, his fun fact is he launched the 250th app on the App Store. Now there are 2 million. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, the floor is all yours, Sina. Uh, happy to have you with us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, greetings from Santa Monica, everybody. Um, it was great to see uh, to see Michaela and Princess Polly, they're a customer of ours. Congratulations on, on winning that prize. And I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit further about some of the importance in terms of having an omni-channel experience and making sure that you're available wherever your customers are. Uh, a little bit about Tapcart, we are essentially a Shopify for mobile apps. So all of the things that Shopify made it really easy to do for an e-commerce website and backend, uh, being able to create it with no code required, being able to update it, um, not requiring an entire development team and resources to it. I think that's what dr what's driven a lot of e-commerce merchants to Shopify is the ease of use, but also the extensibility and the partner ecosystem that we have here uh, that allows us, and our close relationship with Shopify that allows us to create a platform like Tapcart. Uh, what Tapcart allows you to do is to launch a mobile app for your store. So it's a white label app. It's going to appear on the iPhone and Android store. And there's a lot of benefits to it, but really the biggest benefit is that it allows you a lot of control of an end-to-end -end sales and marketing channel. Um, Instagram, it's owned by Facebook. And what you'll ultimately see is that over time, organic reach tends to fade. Um, algorithms are always changing. And it's a great way to connect with your customers. But we want it to be an augment to having your own property. Um, which is the mobile app that allows you to send push notifications to customers as well. When you think about what you should focus on as you're growing a fashion and apparel business, it's making sure that you're in front of your shoppers wherever they want to be and providing a seamless shopping experience. And this is what Omnichannel is all about. Uh, somebody had touched on it earlier. Omnichannel is important because your customers are expecting you to be wherever they are, whether it's you know, point of sale, retail, wholesale, mobile app, Facebook. Wherever they are is where you want to be, and you want to make sure that you can have a strong communication channel with them. So that's why it's really more important than ever to own your marketing channels. Uh, email, obviously, every single store has an email list. Uh, it's probably something that you should be trying to build or grow before you even launch your website. And it's something that just continues to grow in value over time as you get more email subscribers, um, and you get more engagement on your email list as well. SMS, uh, big shout out to Yapo. You guys are crushing it here. SMS is another great marketing channel too. Um, and essentially what these marketing channels are, and the reason that they're called owned marketing channels is that you have subscribers. The difference between an owned marketing channel 
and a non-owned marketing channel is subscribers versus followers. If you have followers, somebody else owns that audience. And in the case of Instagram and Facebook, that someone else is Facebook. So Facebook's a publicly traded company. They've got a duty to their shareholders to maximize their profits. And that's exactly what they'll do. So it's interesting because I actually used to do, uh, I was running a social media marketing agency before starting Tapcart. And back then, this was around in 2015. If you put out an organic post as a business, they would show it to over half of your followers for free. And Instagram was not being monetized at the time. So there was huge engagement. It was a great marketing opportunity, but ultimately what happened over time is they started to pull back that organic reach and fast forward five years, the average engagement organically for a, a Instagram post is one to 2%. So if you want to reach your audience on Instagram, you can, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. That's why it's more important than ever to focus on the marketing channels that you own, such as email, SMS, and push. Just doing a quick comparison of, of some of the different owned marketing channels. And we definitely encourage you to explore all of them. And it's a really great way to invest in your brand long-term. Email is something every e-commerce brand has. It's great. It doesn't have the highest open or, or action rates as other marketing channels, but it should definitely be part of your stack. Facebook Messenger is a good one as well, although it seems to be changing a little bit because, because Facebook owns that. They'll change some of the promotional things around it and some of the guidelines and whatnot. Um, SMS is a great one too. Uh, it offers a really good experience and it offers a real time component that email doesn't offer. Uh, and push notifications has that as well with push notifications. It, it also is a real time component. And the primary difference is, um, with SMS, you have to pay, pay carriers per message but with push notifications. You can send an unlimited number at no extra cost. What's really important when it comes to marketing, especially if you're a fashion and apparel brand, is timing. A lot of campaigns and a lot of orders happen when you can strike while the iron's hot. So a few examples, I'm sure everyone, you know, a lot of merchants out there are using Klaviyo. Uh, and out of the box, you want to think of a couple of sequences and flows that you want to launch with Klaviyo. Abandoned cart is an obvious one. You know, wait 30 minutes after somebody's placed an order. And uh, if they haven't completed that order, then send them an email as a reminder. Uh, they're very effective as email and SMS as well. But when you can send it as a push notification too, that's where those real-time messaging channels really come into play. Because with an SMS or a push, they're a lot more likely to see the message a lot sooner. And ultimately, it's one of those things where the more time that passes between when they abandon the cart and when they see the message about the abandoned cart, the less likely and the less interested, you know, they're actually going to be to go ahead and purchase it. So it's like an inverse correlation where the more time passes, the less likely that person is to convert. So when you have a, a campaign like that or a back in stock sequence, which is which essentially tells, you know, it allows a shopper to put their hand up if a certain product variant is sold out. And, you know, this person is interested, but supplies aren't currently available. This is a great way to keep customers engaged throughout the year and increase retention as well, because they can put their hand up, they can enter their email, they can opt in to push or leave their phone number, and they can get a back in stock, um, a notification directly on their phone or via email as soon as that product is back in stock. With email, the only downside is that it might take a little bit longer than other, um, you know, <clears throat> sorry, one second. <clears throat> than other own marketing channels out there. And as a result, what happens is that that interest that you really had in the first place, it kind of dissipates a little bit over time. So what we want to do is really encourage every e-commerce brand to focus on all of their own marketing channels. And ultimately there's three that are really up at the top and that's email, SMS, and push. There's a number of ways that you can incentivize people to download an app. And this also applies for other methods of getting people to subscribe across other marketing channels. Offering a one-time discount is a great way to grow your email list. Offering certain exclusive products is a great way that you can um, offer certain products and collections available to certain customers. So what you can do is make certain products and, avail and collections available on your website that aren't available um, in retail or vice versa. You can also make certain products and collections available only in your mobile app that aren't available on the website. So that's a great incentive to get people to download an app and engage when you're, um, when you're running promotions. And a third way is also app exclusive content. 
app exclusive content is a great way to you know, continue to bring your customers back and really maximize the ROI of your content. If you're just posting your content on Instagram, like content costs money to produce. So if you're just posting it on Instagram, two seconds later, somebody is going to just scroll down and forget about you forever because there's so much content on Instagram. But if you can have your own property or your own sales channel, like the mobile app, then what you can do is send a push notification, let people know about new content. And as soon as they're done consuming that content, they're going to scroll down, they're going to see more content from you, and they're going to engage with the brand even more. So it's really more important that, uh, than ever to have a, a, a strong omni-channel strategy so you can adapt to the way the customers behave. Another great way to get a higher ROAS, and I'm sure a lot of e-commerce merchants are doing a lot of paid acquisition these days, is by focusing on subscribers and not orders. I think a lot of e-commerce merchants, they focus their paid acquisition on the short term. Let's get a conversion on our website. Um, let's see if somebody can place an order here. But actually building that trust to build an order takes a lot of time. And it's really difficult to get someone to purchase something, especially when they're on their mobile device, which is literally buzzing like hundreds of times a day. So you've really got to be able to close the checkout and complete it really quickly. But I see a lot of brands that are focusing on these link click ads, but they're not really focused on the long term. They might be trying to get short term orders, but another great strategy is to do mobile app install ads. Um, there's a lot of benefits that come to it that are a little, they're a little bit more expensive than, than link click ads, but they provide a lot more value. It's essentially like purchasing a little piece of real estate on somebody's phone. Um, there's a lot of value that comes in that and you get to offer a better experience as well. But most importantly is the push notification subscribers. And this is where it all comes back to own marketing. If you can establish a channel where you get a high push notification opt-in rate, email rate, et cetera, now you can just continue to market to that person at no extra cost. And that's really the benefit of mobile app install campaigns is you're investing in your own brand by purchasing app installs, by purchasing real estate on people's phones. And more likely than not, they're gonna opt in to push notifications and they're gonna continue to engage with the brand. And that's how you get a higher return on your ad spend. That is it from my side. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> awesome. That was fantastic. See, and a few questions before we let you off the hook. Uh, so first up is, you know, you, you talked about the audiences. I appreciate you, uh, you know, clarifying the difference between owned and, and non-owned channels. But wh why is it so important to own your audiences? You mentioned it a little bit, but can you expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all about just having as much control as possible. When it comes to your marketing channels, Instagram is a fantastic source for getting eyeballs on your content. And it's absolutely a place that you should put your content, but you should be more strategic about it. If you can put your content on other channels and make that an incentive to come into that channel, it's a really great way to grow. And that's how, that's how own marketing really comes into it. Got it. And then uh, another question I'm sure you get is, you know, brands might be interested in having a, a natively built app but the maintenance of it, you know, obviously that's a finicky thing with apps is they can become outdated if not maintained properly. Like what, what, first of all, what does tap Parrot offer in terms of like ongoing support? And what would you say to brands who are hesitant because they don't have some technical person on their team who can be dedicated to, you know, maintaining an app? Yeah, I think it's always important to keep an app fresh, just like any sales channel for that matter. So mm -hmm. it's really easy with our platform to just come into the dashboard, which is accessible from your Shopify dashboard. You can move some blocks around, showcase some new products, upload images, videos, et cetera. And you can hit save and the, up, the app will update in real time. So the next time anyone opens it, that's exactly what they're going to see. So it allows you to really uh, stay fresh and not rely on app review teams and things like that. Got it. And then in terms of size, you know, what if an e-commerce store is, is a bit too small? Like, is there a certain threshold, maybe in terms of GMV, where you see brands starting to say, okay, you know what, now is probably a good fit for us to, to build an app? That's a great question. I think just going back to that analogy with the email list, I don't think any e-commerce brand is ever too small to start growing their email list. And as a result, you're really never too small to start growing your push notification list. We have plans that start just 99 bucks a month and we really want to grow with a lot of brands out there. Awesome. Yeah. And I mean, for me, I personally love the use of apps, you know, like for instance, Starbucks, Subway, I say this all the time. It's pretty fun to say Subway actually has a fantastic app. Um, everything you need is there. There's no frictions. There's nothing you can in there. And what I really love about apps is that, you know, it's where you want to exercise any like loyalty points or any special offers you have. It's so much more natural to do it on an app. 
Um, so that's something to, to me that's really exciting. So I guess the final question there is, and you mentioned it before, but like what type of loyalty type integrations does TapGuard have? Because I imagine that's a pretty popular use case. Yeah, we support, uh, support Yapo loyalty. We're going to be adding loyalty lion soon. Smile. Um, so we're going to continue to add to that. I think loyalty is a really key component. Awesome. Cool. I appreciate it. Before we let you off the hook, we are going to announce the special winner of TapCart's Apple TV 4K giveaway, which is a fantastic prize. Big tech companies giving away big tech prizes. No surprise. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to pick a lucky winner. And we have uh, Rochelle Joseph. Um, so Rochelle, you are the lucky winner of the Apple TV 4K, courtesy of TapCart. Thank you for that. And thank you so much, Cena, for joining us yet again. Uh, hope you have a great Chris. Time. Appreciate it. Take care. All righty. Cool. All right. I'm just going to quickly share my screen real quick. So first of all, I just want to thank all of the speakers who joined us today. Uh, I can assure you that taking time on your busy schedule to prepare a presentation and get set up for this event uh, is no easy task. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to join us, especially ahead of a long weekend. Likewise, to all the people who tuned in with us today, I know it's, it's just hot as blazes out there. You have a million things you want to do. Um, but, you know, the brands with us are clearly invested in trying to learn um, the latest and greatest tips and tricks to advance their brand. So we appreciate you. Um, to all our prize winners, we will be in touch with you shortly um, to get those prizes sent over to you. And then finally, I just want to highlight uh, some upcoming events. So we typically do two different events a month. Uh, in the end of July, we have one on uh, basically how to build a, a robust e-com data strategy. So you have a million different types of data. How do you actually leverage them to achieve exactly what you want? And then a huge one is reducing customer acquisition cost. Obviously, the changes in iOS and all the other things happening. Um, it's becoming more expensive to acquire customers, but we have assembled a great panel who will teach you how to, to really minimize those costs. So that's it for me. I'm your host, Chris Lavoie. Thanks for tuning in yet again. And uh, yeah, until next time, I hope everybody has a safe, uh, long weekend. Take care.